Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Thursday morning Bite Size Buell. My name is Kayla. I'm the staff educator at the Buell Planetarium in the Carnegie Science Center. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. This morning, we've got a fun little thing planned. We are going to be looking for some planets in our evening and morning sky. The software I am using today is the Stellarium software. Now this is a free software that you can use at home. You can download it on your cell phone, your computer, and you can follow along. It will also be an amazing guide if you are out stargazing. Now getting started today, I always like to start by finding where I'm looking in the sky. Now there is a very handy guide set of stars that are very low on the horizon this time of year. There are six very bright stars that we can see. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six stars that kind of look like a giant spoon. We call this group of stars the Big Dipper, or the big spoon in our sky. And I like to call these our guide stars because they will help guide us to other stars in our sky. Here's one star in particular that the Big Dipper is very handy at finding. It's very easy to spot if you follow these two stars that make up the bowl of the Big Dipper. Their names are Mirak and Dubby. Tracing a line from Mirak to Dubby and continuing it out into space, five times the width of these stars, and you'll land here. This is the most important nighttime star if you're trying to find your way around. You probably know this star as the North Star. Its official name is Polaris, or the Pole Star. Polaris makes up the handle of another figure in our sky. We call this figure the Little Dipper. Now the Big and Little Dipper are what we call asterisms or star pictures that anyone can make up. They're unique depending on where you are around the world. Here in the United States, we all agree that these two pictures look like spoons. But traveling to different parts of the world, they saw a plow or a wagon. It became very hard for early astronomers to share information until the International Astronomical Union agreed upon 88 official constellations that would be recognized by astronomers worldwide. While the Big and Little Dipper were not promoted to official constellation status, they are inside of constellations. The Big Dipper makes up the body of Ursa Major, the Big Bear. And if we have a Big Bear, you may be able to guess what we'll find next door. Our Little Dipper turns into the Little Bear, Ursa Minor. Now our Big and Little Bear are part of a very special set of constellations we call Circumpolar Constellations which is a very fancy way to say they make a circle around Polaris. And what's very special here in Pittsburgh is we can see these constellations all year long. They are always spinning around Polaris, our North Star. So when we're looking for objects that you will not see all year long are seasonal objects, we need to look in the opposite of the North. So to find our planets, we need to spin to the south. And spinning to the south, once we settle, you will be able to spot what I would argue is the most famous constellation in our sky. He's very easy to spot. You just need to find the three stars that form his belt. This is Orion the Hunter. Orion is made up of some very bright and beautiful stars, making it very easy to see in our evening sky. And with his belt, he becomes an excellent guide 
to other stars, just like the Big Dipper was in the north. Now, Orion is considered a winter constellation. He appears in our early evening sky in December, sticks around until the end of March. Following his belt up through the sky, we will come to a Y-shaped figure. This Y-shaped figure has a bright red eye named Aldebaran, which means the eye of the bull. It's found inside of Tauros, the bull. Now, Tauros is a very special constellation in our sky. He's one of 12 constellations that we call the Zodiac. Now, in astrology, they use the Zodiac to represent different dates of birth. Here in astronomy, the Zodiac form a band around our planet. Once you find one zodiac constellation, you can find the others by swinging towards the east or towards the west. Swinging to our right, we can find Gemini, the Twins, Cancer, the Crab. Swinging the other direction, we will find Aries, the Ram, Pisces, the fish, Pegasus made a little appearance there, and Aquarius, the water bringer. Now these constellations are very special, not because they will predict our futures, but because of where they fall in the sky. These constellations fall along a path that we call the ecliptic, or the apparent path that the sun appears to take from our perspective here on Earth. Now, our solar system is like a giant flat pancake. All of the planets seem to orbit within the same plane. So if this is the path of our sun, this is also the path of our moon, which we can see shining very brightly over here. But it's also the path of the major planets in our solar system. So once you find the path of the zodiac, you can start looking for planets in the night sky. Now tonight, there is one planet very bright and visible that we can see. To find more planets, we're going to need to move to our morning sky. When we're looking for planets, we want to start by looking for bright points of light along the path of the zodiac. Planets often look like bright stars in the sky. But if you watch them for several seconds, you may notice something little odd. Bright stars, like the stars we see in Orion, appear to twinkle in our sky. Because they are very far away, as their light enters our atmosphere, our atmosphere causes it to wiggle, creating a twinkle in your eye. But planets that are much closer to us than these stars, they do not appear to twinkle. Our atmosphere does not affect their light enough for us to be able to see that twinkle in our eye. So if you find a light along the zodiac that isn't twinkling, you may have just spotted a planet. Now to find our planet in our evening sky tonight, we are at 7 o'clock just after the sun has set and we're going to look over towards the west. So once you find Orion, look in the other side of the sky here. Very close, hugging the horizon, you'll see this bright light. This bright light that we see, the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter is a gas giant made of mostly hydrogen and helium gas, very similar to what our sun is made out of. Jupiter is known for its great red spot, which is zooming in here. If you are using a telescope tonight, it looks like you won't get a very good view of that spot. It's kind of up in the upper corner here. That spot is a giant storm that's been raging for hundreds of years. Scientists have determined that storm is actually beginning to shrink. It used to measure three Earths wide. 
it's just slightly bigger than one Earth. Zooming out just a little bit here, you may see what looks like bright stars lined up along Jupiter. Those are the Galilean moons. We're going to zoom back out now so that we can find a few more stars in our sky here. Now to find our other planets, we're going to need to move to our early morning sky. So let's readjust our view so that we're looking to the south and we're going to move through time. And we can watch how the constellations appear to move across the sky as the Earth spins, allowing us to see more of the zodiac constellations. We're going to move to just before the sun rises. There we go. So just a little before 6 a.m. We're actually going to go just a little bit further. Let's go to about 6.15. Here we are. So the sun we can see is just about to rise, but we can still see a few of our bright stars. Looking directly south, we're gonna see one of my favorite summer constellations. It's very easy to spot. You're gonna see a giant hook in the sky. In Polynesian cultures, this was known as Maui's hook may recognize it from the Disney movie Moana. The official constellation we find here is Scorpius, the scorpion. We can see our path of the zodiac through the sky. We can see Leo, Virgo, Libra. Now close to our zodiac constellations, we can also see the head of Sagittarius here. There are three more planets that we are going to spot in our sky. Now these planets are a little trickier to spot than Jupiter. Jupiter is very bright in our sky because it is so large. Let's see if we can find these planets. The very bright planet we're going to see right here, this is the hottest planet in our solar system. This is Venus the second planet in orbit around our sun. Now Venus reaches nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit, both day and night. This is caused by what we call the runaway greenhouse effect. Venus has a very dense carbon dioxide atmosphere that traps heat on its surface, much like your car traps heat on a hot summer day. The sunlight enters through your windows, but it has nowhere to escape back out, making your car very, very hot. That's a very similar thing that's happening here on Venus. Sunlight enters through the clouds, but it cannot enter back out, so that heat is continuously building up. Now there are two more planets we're going to be able to spot in our early morning sky if you are an early morning riser. Our next planet is actually near Sagittarius. And now that we've moved a little forward ahead, we can see what looks like a giant teapot very close to the horizon. Towards the top of our teapot, we're going to see a very bright red light. This is the red planet Mars, one of the most explored planets in our solar system. We've sent lots of robots and rovers, all types of equipment to Mars to learn more about it. Zooming in, we can see Valles Marineris, the grandest canyon of them all. This canyon is so long, it would stretch from coast to coast across the United States. Now zooming back out, there is one more planet that we are going to spot. Now it is obscured in our glow of dawn here. It's very close to the horizon. We're going to fast forward just a little bit further to about 630, just before the sun comes up over the horizon, very close to the horizon. We will see one more light. 
This is Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to our sun and it is the smallest of the major planets in our solar system. And Mercury orbits very quickly around the sun. It was named for the messenger god who had wings on his feet. Now Mercury and Venus, because they are so close to the sun, we will always see them very close to sunset or sunrise. Just because of where their orbits are, they tend to stick very close to the sun in our sky. Now we were able to spot some amazing planets today. We were able to spot four planets in total that you can go out and observe tonight or tomorrow morning and in the next few weeks to come. But that is the end of our planet journey today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all enjoyed our journey and I hope you get to visit us at the Carnegie Science Center soon. We are currently doing a seat campaign in the Buell Planetarium. If you'd like to learn more about that seat campaign called Space for Everyone, you can look down in the description below. We are open at the Science Center. You can get your time tickets online. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful Thursday and stay warm.